Alright guys and gals, welcome to the channel. My name is Jesse Kublikan Hoff. If you're new to the channel, uh, my channel is pretty random. We work on motorcycles, we put solar panels on houses, uh, we're traveling around the world. I hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe if you can. Today we're going to be working on my KLR 2001 Kawasaki uh, motorcycle. You know, I've got this motorcycle maybe six, seven years ago. Um, you know, I knew that the piston rings were kind of probably worn. You know, it was always smoking and um, lately it's been underpowered. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to do a compression test and hopefully this video will encompass the entire um, disassembly of the top end of the engine and I'm going to replace the piston rings. A uh, couple other indicators that the piston rings are worn um, and shot, you know, burns oil. Uh, once again it smokes and right now it's underpowered and um, it doesn't start that great. It, it will start and run but um, I think it's time that we do the pistons. So let's get to it. Alright, there's my bike in all its glory. You know, I say pistons in the introductory part of this video, but it only has one piston, this motorcycle. This is a KLR 650 2001. Uh, we're gonna take the tank off, do a compression test, uh, just to kind of satisfy my um, curiosity that the piston rings are shot. So I'm gonna do a compression test. I'll drop a little oil into the cylinder and see if the compression goes up. Take tank off. We're going to take this bolt off, this bolt off. Uh, we're going to undo uh, the tubes that go to the peacock. And um, I also took off these side panels already. And just held on by a bolt there and uh, here. And uh, I'm going to take this seat off. There's another bolt right there. Uh, I'm going to leave the battery in so I can crank over the engine. And I do have other videos online about this motorcycle you know if you're a subscriber to my channel um, I replaced this the shock I have a video of me rebuilding that so uh, yeah check those out and off comes that yeah once you get those seat bolts out seat pops off and those bolts need to come out to get the tank off you also want to disconnect the, the the hose lines, you know, make sure the pick got is turned off. Pull off this hose. And there's one more hose back here. Against the vacuum line. Okay. There's also a hose right here. I'm just gonna disconnect that. And I'm gonna loosen these two bolts and tank should come off. All right, tank should pop off now. It should be disconnected. Put that to the side. All right, next step is to pull this plug. I'm gonna pull this off. Now I'm gonna find the appropriate socket to get this, the spark plug out. And this is a good time to talk about uh, the Cacker. A lot of other videos on YouTube talk about the Kawasaki automatic compression release mechanism, which you can only get at if you take this valve cover off. I'm going to do this compression test without um, screwing the cacker, just letting it do its thing. And all I'm really concerned about is whether the compression goes up after I put a little oil into the cylinder. I'm going to see what the compression is. And there's a spark plug. Holy crap, is it carbonized. Check out that spark plug. Oh my goodness. So fouled. What the hell is I I gotta get a new spark plug. Yeah, look at that spark plug. It's like there's not even any gap left. My god. So after I check compression, I'll probably put a new spark plug in, put it all back together and see if it runs a little bit better, but... Yeah. There's so much junk in, like, uh, by the spark plug. I'm just gonna do a little vacuuming. Alright, so I got the thing rigged up. I did have to use an adapter on this compression kit. Uh, so we're gonna open up the throttle wide open, hit the starter. See what we get. Make sure the bike is in neutral, eh? It's <laughs> just fucking... <laughs> Woo, that's pretty low. 25 PSI. Oh my God, it's terrible. All right, we're gonna put a little oil down the cylinder and then see what the reading is after we do that. Oh, 
All right, oil just went into the cylinder, throttle's wide open. Yeah, that got up to like 60. All right, I just did it again and it got up to about 80. All right, I guess that's about 90. So, man, oil in the cylinder, that's not good. <laughs> it went up so significantly. Yeah, so that definitely another test to confirm that yes, I probably have bad piston rings. All right, compression shot. So we're gonna take off the valve cover, check valve clearances, we're gonna take off this fan, we're gonna take out these uh, engine mounting bolts, and um, there's a coil bolt on the other side. I'll take that off, and then we'll see if we can get the valve cover off. Yeah, I usually shoot these for documentary purposes too. So there's three bolts on the fan, one here, one here. Just gotta remember there's a little uh, ground wire on this bottom fan bolt. There's one other bolt behind there. Fans off, I uh, zip tied it up to that little um, handlebar. Now I'm gonna take off this little coil pack. Looks like there's uh, one bolt right up there. And then down here there's a little uh, kinda connection thermostat or I mean, um, temperature gauge I guess. Get this thing unplugged. Alright, that thing just came right off. And just by the way to the, um, the fan bolts were uh, 10 millimeters. And it looks like this one for the coil pack is 10 millimeters also. Okay, and off that comes. Valve cover bolts are going to be next. Looks like it's a 12 millimeter bolt. Come off pretty easy. When I took those valve cover bolts out, I could smell the burning oil. It's just uh, bad signs all around. And there's a AV rider forum that I've been reading, kind of a, a lot of good pictures about doing this job. Um, it appears the right side bolts for the valve cover are a little longer than the left side. And uh, we'll verify that right now. Yeah, that's the left side bolt. It's a lot shorter than the right side. Let me show you that. All right, there's the the left and the right. Um, bolts for the valve cover respectively. Uh, left is on uh, on the left, right is on the right. Uh, I'm going to label those appropriately. So I'm also going to remove these bolts right here just so we got a little bit more room to take the valve cover off. It's valve cover time. I'm gonna tap it with a rubber hammer. Let's see if we can get this thing off. Oh, there it goes. I smell burnt oil. All right, so what I was suspecting was that I wouldn't be able to uh, get this valve cover off without removing this tube, the coolant tube. So I'm gonna remove that first. All right, we're gonna drain the coolant first before we remove that tube. Uh, here's the water pump right here. And there's a release valve right here. It's like an eight millimeter bolt. Yeah, once that starts flowing, it probably won't flow until you release the, uh, the radiator cap, which is over here. So release that. Alright, so I took the tube off, a little six millimeter socket on that hose clamp. Yeah, I'm, this hose is a little bit of a bitch and kind of got my channel locks and I'm wiggling it back and forth to get it off. I gotta find it. Oh, there it goes. Got a little more cone in there. Yeah, here it comes. There's the valve 
cover. All right, there's the the cam lobes, and uh, here's the cacker automatic uh, compression release. Uh, looks pretty clean in there. Yeah, I don't see any metal shavings or anything. Cam lobes all look, appear to be out, so I'm thinking the bike's already at top dead center. But I'll check that. And everything's really well labeled. You know, this says um, intake. Intake over here. There's an R on that one to remember where it was. I'm not sure if I'll even have to label those. Um, R exhaust. Probably gonna take this gasket off. Just put that to the side. Um, but first, I'm gonna make sure the bike's in a top dead center. All right, we're gonna make sure the engine's at top dead center. Looks like it already is. I uh, use a quarter to get these things free. I guess a like a wide Phillips head, you know, wide flat head would probably work also. We're gonna see if we can get a shot of this. I got my socket, 19 millimeter socket. I'm gonna turn the crank counterclockwise until we see a T um, through this hole right here. Uh, I don't see a T just yet. Make sure the bike is in neutral too. I want to show you guys this. We're top dead center according to the plug hole. Okay. But when you go up here, we look at the cam lobes. The cam lobes are all pointing in. So we got to turn that crank um, one more time so that all the cam lobes are pointing out. Okay. I'm going to do that again. All right. So cam lobes now are pointing outwards from the center of the cylinder, just the way it should be. Now we can measure um, valve clearance. All right, time to test for valve clearances. Let me show you what I'm doing. I got my little feeler gauge. Feeler gauge has um, you know, different thicknesses of feeler gauge thingies <laughs> on it. Um, you know, from my research, the intake valves on this KLR should be uh, between uh, 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters. And the exhaust valve should be between 0.15 and 0.25 millimeters. Um, so, you know, I'm going to start small and go up, you know. Um, see what, or maybe we can start big and then go small. So, you know, I'm going to take my 0.2 millimeter um, feeler gauge and see if it slips in to that valve. And I cannot slip it in. Yeah, my, well, it kind of slips in a little bit. Yeah, so I'm going to say that's 0.2. Um, I'm going to go up from there. I use my, uh, I have a 0.3. Let's see, where's my 0.3? This is my 0.3. It's a little thicker. I'm going to see if that'll go in. That one will not slide in. So, you know, the valve clearance is between 0.2 and 0.3. Um, you know, I'm going to say it's closer to 0.2, which I think is within specs. Um, the next valve, the another intake valve over here, that is also will not accept the 0.3. So I go down to 0.2. See if the 0.2 will slip in there. And that also slips in there. So between 0.2 and 0.3. Um, if I go over to the exhaust side, I cannot slip that 0.2 in there. So I go over to my next one down, which is a 0.15 millimeter. See if that'll fit. And sure enough, I can slip a 0.15 in there. So, from what my research indicates, my exhaust valve clearances should be bigger than um, my um, intake ones, which kind of worries me a little bit, but I think things are within spec. All right, last thing I'll point out with uh, these feeler gauges is, um, you know, for example, my, um, my left exhaust, um, a 0.15 feeler gauge will not fit in there, a 0.1 does. Um, but they also have feeler gauges that are 0 0.04. So to kind of fine tune it, I put that 0.1 and that 0 0.04 together 
Now I have a 0.14 feeler gauge to see if that fits in also. And that doesn't fit in there also. So, you know, the, the measurement is prob is closer be between 0.1 and 0.15. You know, I'm going to guess it's probably closer to 0.1. All right, so once you get all those feeler gauge uh, measurements uh, dialed in, make sure you write them down. I wrote those down on my phone. Um, you know, for example, my, my left intake, uh, which is uh, right over here, is measuring 0.24. Um, you know, the spec says that that should be between 0.1 and 0.2. That's a little too high, uh, too big. So what I would probably do is get a, a thicker valve shim. I'll show you the valve shims in a little bit. And to um, make that gap a little smaller, okay? So that's why you should write these down. And um, we'll go over that in a little bit. All right, here's the, the cam chain tensioner. Uh, from what I've read, there's no going back. You know, once you loosen this middle bolt, you loosen this middle bolt first, and then these two bolts right here, uh, you got to reset it. So um, I'm going to loosen that bolt, and it's kind of pretty much um, no going back from that point, but I guess you just got to reset it. So this looks like these are 10 millimeter bolts. This is a uh, 12 millimeter. All right, I'm going to remove the starter. It'll give me a little more room to uh, get the piston jug out. Um, from what I've read, it has to come out anyway. And the exhaust pipe has to come off also, so I'm going to take that exhaust, the exhaust pipe off right now too to get easier access to the starter. Screws here, here, uh, two mounting bolts, acorn nuts right here and here. Uh, there's got a nut over there. My exhaust bolts are uh, all loosened up. It's like kind of comes off in like two pieces. Just forward and back. Taking the starter out, we got a negative lead to the starter on this bolt. Uh, this bolt also also look like they're 10 millimeter. There's a positive lead also. That little rubber grommet's kind of like you have to tear it off. It's pretty old, and then the starter will come out. First two starter bolts came out pretty good. Um, another good idea to disconnect the battery before you do this. Um, this I got this was so I had to peel this back that uh, rubber grommet thing. Um, I'm not sure if that's salvageable, but this I had to like, get a grip wrench on because it was kind of spinning. So I put a grip wrench on there and then put my 10 millimeter socket on the end of it. I was able to get that free. So it should come out now. I say there's a friction O-ring in there. It's coming. There it comes. Yep, there it comes the starter. All right, plenty more room on the other side of the bike now for uh, to try to break free this valve tensioner bolt. I mean, this cam tensioner. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, these other bolts are 10 millimeters. They come out pretty easy. I think there's like some copper gasket underneath here. Let's see. That comes, there it is. That needs to be reset before putting in. And you can already see how much looser the, the chain is already. Next step is to remove the camshaft cap bolts. Uh, you should do this equally. There are dowels underneath the camshafts, so they need to be pulled up directly um, straight up. Um, I've been breaking them with uh, just this small little socket, 10 millimeter. Uh, so they're not on there that tight. Uh, this one's on there tight though. Uh. I'm also going to remove this gasket that I never removed because I'm cranking on bolts. I don't want to damage it. Okay, I got the bolts loose on this first one. This is uh, the right intake. Take those bolts out nice and carefully. Make sure we don't drop them. That's why we put the rag in there. And up comes that. There are the dowels. Yeah, this one's kind of loose. I'll take that one out. That looks like it's in fairly good shape though. And just for future reference, also the arrows on these cam uh, caps um, are all pointing forward. 
All right, so this one's almost out. I did the, the right side first just because this one is kind of stuck. Like there's a kind of tube that extends. Sweet, I got this out now. There it is. All right, so next step is uh, the cam chain. Uh, getting that release, there's three bolts, one right there and uh, two down here, one down there, and I got one covered up with a sock. Uh, release those, take the guide off, and then uh, we can get the, the cam shafts off. Once you get those bolts out, time to lift this guy up. You know, also a lot of guys online zip tying this um, chain to the frame so it doesn't fall into the crankcase. Uh, I read one forum about a guy just grabbing it with a magnet if it does fall in there, but I'm gonna zip tie it. All right, now these camshafts should just come right off the chain like so. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I'm really curious about how hard these uh, head bolts are going to be to get off, so I'm going to tackle those next. i got to take the carb off too, but I'm going to see if I can break these head bolts before I take the carb off. Alright, you know everybody's saying <laughs> online to use a 12 point, I mean a 6 point socket. I got a 12 point socket. I think 14 millimeter fits really good. I tried 9 16 that fits a little, uh, doesn't fit as good, so I'm using 14. I do have a 6.916, but I'm not gonna use it. So I think 14 millimeter fits a little better. Uh, I got my breaker bar. Let's see how hard these bolts are. Ah, I just cracked that. That wasn't tough. Yeah. Definitely lug nuts I've had tighter. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, let me just show you guys something on these really hard bolts. I've broken a lot of hard bolts before. I'm not even using a really long extension. But I think the key is to keep pressure on that, that, that joint of the socket. If you start cranking this way, it has a tendency to slip off and that's when you'll strip. So I like to really keep a lot of pressure on that if I can. And if I had a buddy, I'd probably have him doing that while I'm on the crank. But I was able to get all these all by myself with just a, uh, I don't know, what's that, foot and a half extension. I got those header bolts broken. I'm gonna take the carb off now. I just labeled that cable. It goes here. Um, And I'm gonna pull this carb out. <laughs> All right, how comes the carb? Uh, oh yeah, there's that cable. Yeah, there's another one just unscrewed there. All right, carburetor's out. Oil banjo bolts are next. There's one here. Looks like it takes a 14 millimeter. And there's one up here also. And there's like a little uh, retainer for that banjo bolt. All right, so I got the oil banjo bolts out. Uh, I also took off these acorn nuts. These acorn nuts were, uh, there's one here and one here. They're 12 millimeter. I was able to get them off with a wrench that small. I uh, had to bang it a little bit. I'd recommend a 12 millimeter a little small, a little bigger. There was also a, an Allen bolt on the other side of the engine. Uh, that was a T40 
um, Allen bolt. And I have an Allen socket. It looks like that. It's a T40. Use that to get that out. Now I'm just taking the header bolts out and then I'll try to take the head off. Alright, I think I got the first header bolt free. There it is, header bolt number one. So I got to the last header bolt and it's kind of weird, like I can't get it out. This frame is in the way. So I'm gonna try to get the head off without removing this bolt all the way. Let's see if it works. Yeah, weird, huh? So I'm gonna smack it with the rubber mount a little bit. So you can see it moving. There it goes. Uh, come on, head. I wonder if I can. Uh, yeah, I can get the header bolt out now. There's a couple dowels in there you don't want to lose. Okay. Good. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the chain. All right. So what I did was I attached the chain below the head uh, to the oil banjo bolt so that it won't fall into the the bottom. I don't know if you really have to do that. I got a magnet. I mean, that means I can cut the zip tie at the top. that and then I'm going to try to pull it off Chain's dropping now. I don't know, I should be able to maneuver some stuff. Okay, what was that? I don't know what that was. So that's the top of our cylinder. I haven't really seen many cylinder heads. Uh, I don't think there's supposed to be that much junk <laughs> on the top of it. God, look at that, holy crap. A lot of carbonization. It's uh, kind of confirming what I thought. I'm really interested in getting this piston jug off. Let's take a look at the cylinder head. Um, I mean, lots of carbon over there too. You know, it doesn't look terrible, but um, yeah, let me get this jug off and then we'll uh, see if there's any scoring in that, s in that jug. But yeah, there's so much junk on the top of there. All right, so I was having trouble getting these valve shims out in the bike, so I started working on them um, after I got the head off. It was a little easier. I got this little tiny, small flathead screwdriver. Uh, really thin one. I also tried using a knife because I was having a lot of trouble getting this one out. But you know, as I worked it a while, I was able to get that out and was able to pop these out. Um, but it did require a little bit of work there. So for example, this one's got a number of uh, 255 on it. My, that's my left intake. My left intake was measuring at 0.24 um, before and I want it to be about 0.2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a thicker valve shim by 0 0.05. Since this is a 255, I'm going to get a 260. That'll increase the valve shim by 0 0.05 millimeters and put me within spec. I'm going to do that for that one and the exhaust too. 
So this piston jug should come off easy. Yeah, there's an acorn nut right here and an acorn nut right here. And then this hose has to come off and um, I think there's a bolt underneath this thing here. So that's about it. Right, let me just show you guys. I got the acorn bolts off here. Other acorn bolt is over there. Tubes off and there's one final bolt inside. I don't know if you can see that. Down in that chasm. All right, gonna see if we can get this piston jug off now. Got that bolt in there off. Finally got that piston jug free, smacked it as hard as I could with a hammer. Now we're gonna try to get it off. Okay, it's coming. It's gotta keep wiggling out, I guess. Like the piston head is like rubbing out. Oh, there it comes. I see it. Whew! There it is! Last piece of the puzzle. Okay. Get this off. There she is! Yeah! I got the head apart. I've been taking the valves out. Yeah, the valve shim kind of sits on this thing right here. Um, but I've been having a lot of trouble getting this one out. This is like the valve, uh, kind of like, it's like a cap. And um, what I've been using are these magnets to like pull on them. And then I like kind of pull the, the cap out, but this one won't come out. I've got a stronger magnet on it. it still won't come out. So I'm gonna go with my buddy Stanley, see if he can help me. Um, yeah, the other valves came out really easily. Here's the other valves. The exhaust valves are really gummed up. This one's got a lot of carbon on them. I think they'll clean up. Stanley's gonna show us a technique. Okay. Yeah. What you gotta do? Uh huh. Right there is a. Yeah, I saw that. It like a so you need neck. to you need to take something and yeah, that's what's catching it. Yeah, that little neck, huh? Yeah. So you need a, a sharp knife or gotcha. And just uh, just you know slice that back, and that will come out. All right. I think that's what's catching it, huh? That's it. Yeah, that's exactly what's catching it. Somebody, Stanley, put his number here in Glenwood Springs. All your motorcycle needs. <laughs> Free advertising, Stanley. I got a YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. See the nick we're talking about is like right there. It's kind of stopping the cap from coming out. I don't even got it. It's going out now. Ah. Need right. any engine boards or more work on your motorcycle? Come to this guy. <laughs> Alright, let me show you what you're doing here. We got our valve, I got my valves out, and I've been uh, using this uh, drill press, chucking them. I'm not really putting just chucks and hand tight. Spin them around. I use a little scratch bright, and you know, they're cleaning up pretty well, I think. You know, this is the intake valve that cleaned up really well. And um, there's a the top. That one cleaned up well. My exhaust valves are definitely more gummed up. You know, if I find like some stuff that's really hard for the scratch bright to come across and I kind of scrape it with a little screwdriver. But um, yeah, I'm gonna clean these up. All right, here's our before and after shot. So here's the exhaust valve. It's not cleaning up nearly as well as the intake valves, but I think it'll do. Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna be uh, lapping my valves now. Got my um, head back. Um, 
This project has been taking a while because I had to get the cylinder board. But what we're going to do today, I got a little surgical tube and I stuck a, um, a bit in the end of it. I'm going to use my um, cordless drill to lap my valves. And um, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to the valves in there. I'm going to stick my cordless drill in the end of the valve, put a little valve grinding compound on it. And I think that's, I'm going to lap it. Um, the exhaust valves are definitely, you know, I wouldn't say they're pitted, but um, they definitely need more work than the, the intake valves. So I'm going to grind the crap out of those. I just wanted to show you guys a close up of my exhaust valves. Yeah, that's what they look like beforehand, before any lapping. And also what I've been noticing is like pretty much, I've been burning oil on this motorcycle for months, I mean years. And the exhaust valves were terrible, you know. I was in there with a little tiny screwdriver scraping all the carbon out of them. You know, the, um, I was using carb cleaner. The intake valves cleaned up really well. Exhaust valves took a lot of work. So if you're burning oil and you plan on doing this, um, depends how long you've been burning oil, but it's, um, it's quite a long, extensive cleaning process. And best if you had like one of those parts cleaners, you know like a big old bin, you could just soak it in. I didn't have one, so I just using carb cleaner. We're gonna do the left intake first. I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. Directions say add a, put a liberal amount on. So, put a liberal amount. Uh -huh. And okay, now I'm gonna stick her in. There you go. I cut up some old underwear. <laughs> Use those as rags. And I'm gonna stick my chuck on the other end of the valve. And see how it goes. So I can kind of pull on it. That's working pretty good. Here's another angle. That's pretty good. Okay, so I just got the valve out. Clean that stuff off. Yeah, I mean, see some of the corrosion gone off it. Might give it another whirl. Yeah, I mean, that definitely looks better. I think I'm gonna do it a little bit more to get some of the more of the corrosion off it. All right, I'm gonna do another whirl. I mean, the good thing, cool thing about this is that like, you can kind of pull on this and get it going. Alright, I'm gonna do another whirl. I mean, the good thing, cool thing about this is that like, you can kind of pull on this and get it going. Alright, final shot of the exhaust valves. Cleaned up pretty good. Not perfect, but yeah, I think it'll do. All right, guys, there's my piston. Just installed it. Let me catch you guys up. Um, I installed these piston rings on this new piston. Uh, there's a 90 degree gap here. The silver one goes on top. The instructions are pretty um, pretty good. Other gap goes over here. Um, corrugated metal oil scraper gap goes here. And then there's a gap for this. these two rings, one here and then one over there. Just follow the instructions if you get a new one. Clips went in very easily. I didn't have much trouble with that. So I do have a uh, my piston jug also. I'm put, putting that on. And I'll just uh, tell you what, what I did with this. What I did after I got it bored out. Looks really good now. 
Stan the man did a great job on it. I cleaned it out with Tide in the bathtub. And then I've been using Marvel Mystery Oil. Let me show you. To clean it out. So I was told by the guy that boarded it out that I should clean it with this Marvel Mystery Oil to get all the hone stone out of the cylinder. So I've been doing that. Got it nice and clean. Scraped off all the gasket material with a razor blade. I didn't really use any uh, gasket cleaning material. Did the same thing on the, the mating surface over there on the, that part of the bike. And um, I'm gonna try to use my hands first. If that doesn't work, I do have a um, compressor, a spring, uh, a ring compressor. Where'd that thing go? I'll show it to you in a second. Oh, here it is. This is my ring compressor. I'll try to use my hands first. If that doesn't go well, I'm gonna use that thing. All right, so I got the, the piston jug about halfway on. I did it without this stupid um, thing. What I realized about this was that if I even got it on, there was no way to release it, you know? It doesn't come all the way apart. So I, um, my buddy who bored out the cylinder said that if you could use like one of those big uh, hose clamps, but I, I was able to get it on without that stuff. I kind of did one ring, then I jumped over to the other side and did the other side and was able to get it in. I'm going to put a little oil on the skirt and just slide her down. Okay, let me see how this goes. And I already put the gasket down. Yeah, it's sliding nice. I gotta remember to get this fucking black thing it's in the way. Yeah, so there's something to remember. You know, when I was sliding it down, I definitely got that um, black thing in the way. So you gotta make sure that thing is in as you do it. I think I'm gonna zip tie the cam chain back again. All right, yeah, so I tied up the, the cam cham again. Uh, one thing to watch out for, yeah, is definitely that black thing over there. And, uh, yeah, should slide down. Another thing I noticed too, was that when I was first initially sliding, oh shit. Oh man, the crank went down. All right, the shins instruction says don't panic if <laughs> the engine isn't at top dead center anymore. All you gotta do is get that cylinder like past the bottom. So I did that. Cool. So I think that's good. All right, so once you get the piston jug down, you gotta get these acorn nuts back on. There's one right here. And there's one over here, if you can see that one. Just put that one on. Tighten that one up. And then there's that bolt in the cha cam chain down there that you need to tighten up. All right, so I just had a little bit of a scare. Just wanted to describe to you guys what happened. I had the cam chain tied up and uh, ready to put the valve uh, cams, uh, cams shafts back on the bike. So I wanted to make sure it was at top dead center and I saw that it wasn't at top dead center. So I started turning that crank and I went past the T. I didn't see the T. And then I had to go back clockwise and I kind of got this ch chain jammed in there and it was really short for a second and I was like crap and I had to like kind of wiggle um, this bolt back and forth to get the cant chain back out so you gotta be really careful if your engine is not still at top dead center um, make sure you have this chain like a little loose you know like in your hand um, yeah so I had to turn it the engine back clockwise to get it back at T I didn't want to go all the way full revolution around so I hope that's all right but 
A little bit of a scare. Other than that, um, yeah, valve head went on nicely. Uh, main head gasket went on nice. Uh, just been bolting stuff together. Starter motor went in. No major problems. All right, so there's a good shot of my, my valve shims. This one, I don't know if I noted this before, but um, you know, I measured the valve clearances before like uh, I took everything apart, you know? That's what the manual tells you to do. You know, I think you can skip that step altogether because after I got the valves all cleaned out, after I got the head all cleaned out, the bore, everything, I reassembled the head uh, with the camshafts in it and remeasured the valve clearances and they were totally different. So uh, I just replaced uh, the two exhaust valve shims in the front. Um, the intake ones ended up being good. So um, I know it's, it's that initial, you don't really have to really do the initial um, clearance uh, when you're taking the bike apart because you if you're gonna clean it all out, it's all gonna change. All right, cool, I got the cam lobes up there. I put this little thing back on. And um, now we're gonna put the cam chain temperature back in. And I wanted to shoot this part of the video because <clears throat> I just didn't think it was that clear in the manual. Um, I, I've been reading the Shintz manual about how to reinstall stuff. Um, yeah, so I just thought like this spring compressor was, uh, you know, I kept pushing the plunger back in and um, it wasn't really going back in. So you gotta take that bolt out and the spring pops out and then you install it. So let's try this. The arrow goes down, the notch goes that way. I got my little gasket right here. Like that. And that goes in there. Like so. And then you get your bolts in there. All right, so once you get these bolts <laughs> torqued down, then you install this copper washer and this bolt. Let's see how this works. Once we listen close, we might be able to hear it ratchet. Did you hear it? Just ratcheted. And so the manual also says to uh, rotate the engine counterclockwise a couple times after you get the tensioner in there. You might hear it uh, ratchet out some more. So we're gonna do that. This is a 19 millimeter socket, by the way. I think I heard it ratchet. Alright, All right, so I got everything together. Got the cam caps on now. And uh, just put a little layer of silicone um, gasket sealant on the rim. It was a little hard to do. I think in the future it's a better idea to actually apply it to the gasket. Um, that's what I would have done differently. But should work. I'm going to put that on there and then put the carburetor in. All right, it's coming back together. Got the valve cover back on. Got the carburetor back in. Something they won't tell you in the manual. It's a very good idea to put this choke cable back in the carburetor before you install it into the rubber grommets. They also used a um, heat gun to warm up the, um, the rubber to get it a little easier to get in. But remember to put this um, choke cable in first. It was a bitch to screw in. Um, yeah, once you uh, got the uh, carburetor in already. Well, there she is. We got the gas tank on. We got the battery in. I hardly wait to fire this thing up. 
Hey, you know, make sure there's oil in it, of course, and uh, here goes nothing, huh? Alright guys, well thanks for watching. I really hope that just fires right up. I'm really tempted to use starter fluid, but um, I think I'm just going to try to use a choke. Yeah, I'm a little worried about the choke cable, you know, it's a little hard getting into the carburetor, but um, I'm going to try it anyway. Make sure there's oil in it. Um, nothing left now, just to uh, try to start it. I cranked over the engine a couple times using um, the crankcase bolt too. Feels good. Alright, let's see what happens. Oh boy. You know, I suspect that it's going to take a little while to start. There's no gas in the, in the car. Alright, well here's another really important thing. <laughs> you got to make sure the fuel is on. Oh shit, I haven't had the fuel on the whole time. Ah, so stupid. What an idiot. Let's ride tomorrow.